The president's presumptive pick for the Federal Reserve Board, Stephen Moore, has withdrawn, officially withdrawn from being considered for the very influential appointment. This happened moments ago. The president made the announcement, as usual on Twitter, uh, saying Stephen Moore, a great pro-growth economist and a truly fine person, has decided to withdraw from the Fed process. Steve won the battle of ideas, including tax cuts. Uh, quote, uh, all right, tax cuts. Hey, right, that's what it says. Uh, okay, so Steve Moore is uh, out. The markets have, as a result of this, taken a bit of a dip, sort of related to it, because Jay Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, who you remember was put in by Donald Trump, has suggested he's not cutting interest rates, which is what most economists would believe the right thing to do right now is. Yes, look at GDP. Look at the growth that we've had. Remember, interest rates get cut when you need the economy boosted. And, and excuse me, Stephen Moore, for example, has a very bad history of having malleable or dishonest economic policy. He's been saying for the last year, we're in a deflationary environment, which we're not. That means prices are going down. Stephen Moore on the record during the financial crisis saying we were in hyperinflation, which means you should tighten monetary policy, mm -hmm. which we absolutely should not have. Remember, when the financial crisis happened, that's when you saw central bankers here and then abroad lower rates so they would make it easier to borrow money, start businesses, boost things. Stephen Moore has given the exact opposite analysis. He went on CNBC this week and said, well, I would be the right pick because I'm someone who understands the president's economic agenda. Mm. Eh, the Fed is an independent body that should never be influenced by the president. So all interesting points, except that isn't even why he wasn't going to get the nomination, right? He was facing criticism from a bunch of senators because of controversial comments he's made. Some of them are what, what uh, Stephanie just talked about, but he's also made uh, controversial comments on gender and gender equality. He proposed getting rid of child labor laws. He's mocked women in athletics, he says women shouldn't be coaches and refs and shouldn't even be serving beer at, uh, at college sports. basketball games. Right. He suggested that closing the gender wage gap would make families less stable. He even said, quote, first thing Donald Trump does as president is kick a black family out of public housing. It was a joke, a horrific joke. And this is what he said in an interview earlier this week. The biggest problem I see in the economy over the last 25 years is what has happened to male earnings. I want everybody's wages to rise, of course, but I, you know, people are talking about um, women's earnings. They've risen. The problem actually has been the, the steady decline in, in male earnings, and I think we should pay attention to that because I think that has very negative consequences for the economy and for society. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. Correct. For fact's sake, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, since 2010, weekly earnings for men have actually risen by about 2.1%. Women's earnings have risen by 3.9%. During the same time. But, but remember, remember, women are underpaid relative to men, so you, you should be seeing a higher gain. The gender pay gap still exists. So, no, men aren't being paid less because of these women climbing up the ladder. We're simply trying to even Correct. things out. It is stunning. Right. And embarrassing for Stephen Moore to even say something like yeah, that. Yeah, remember, a rate of growth, uh, men and women's wages have been growing at a slightly different rate. That's not less. They're both positive. Uh, the rate of growth for women's earnings, which are generally speaking lower than men's, have been growing at an uh, increased rate. The end result is actually not necessarily better for women. Ali, he has been criticized, not just by liberal economists, AEI, Hoover, Cato have gone I'm after sure him economic, saying economics. that his economic policies do not make sense or they flip-flop depending on the whims of no. the President of the United States. Let's bring in CNBC's editor-at-large John Harwood and NBC News White House correspondent uh, Kelly O'Donnell. Kelly, uh, uh, Harwood and Stephanie and I are going to get carried away talking economics for a second, but there's a political aspect to this. The President uh, nominated two people to the Federal Reserve Board to try and get his way. His way involves lower interest rates because he thinks that's going to increase uh, continue to see stock market increases, he didn't get his way. He didn't get his way, and these were not formal nominations, but the president had allowed this to be talked about publicly, and that is where the space between actually talking about a Herman Cain or a Stephen Moore and the actual nomination point was filled with controversy, and that space typically is not filled with that. Also, this is a highlight of how this White House and this pr president in particular can somewhat, sometimes put forward someone who is a friend, uh, perhaps a 
supporter of his without any vetting, without seeing all of uh, the potholes and problems along the path toward confirmation. This is really an indication of Senate Republicans who said no way, that they would not support him based on the economic issues you've just discussed, his past writings, longtime columnists. There is fertile ground to be mined. And he said a lot of controversial things. So the president, who had had more on Air Force One with him and had talked about nominating him, had not actually sent the paperwork in. Uh, that's sort of, you know, beside the point at this moment. What stands out is then the president withdrawing, saying that more would not be under consideration, but he'd still like to work with him. What it does is it tells us that there is a message from Senate Republicans, who, of course, are responsible for confirming any presidential uh, nomination of this level. So it's not a House side issue. It's Senate only. And when you don't have Senate Republicans, you don't have a confirmable nominee. And that's what you've got with Stephen Moore and Herman Cain. The president likes to tout the economy, and that is important as he becomes candidate Trump again. This is two big vac vacancies and two very spotty episodes in his stewardship of the economy when it comes to the Federal Reserve. Okay, but John Harwood, I discussed this with a former administration official uh, very, very recently, and he said to me, this is President Trump's jam. He doesn't get humiliated. Stephen Moore gets humiliated. He throws out people's names who are an F, who Senate Republicans would say, absolutely not, no way, Jose. And then he then slides in a C or a D minus. And they start to say, well, he's better than the last guy. Or we know he's not going to push Jay Powell. But if Jay Powell simply gets things more stabilized, the president does chip, chip, chip away. Well, a lot of people thought that after Herman Cain withdrew that Stephen Moore, therefore, on that theory, uh, had his ticket onto the Fed. But both of these nominees, in the judgment of Republican economists, were simply not qualified for the job. All of the writings and the controversy, and in the case of Cain, the sexual harassment charges, and in the case of Steve, uh, all the things he'd said and written over the years, those add to it. But the core element uh, was that, uh, you know, people like Greg Mankiw, who was the head of the Council of Economic Advisors, under President George W. Bush said publicly as soon as Moore's name was floated, this guy does not belong on the Fed. The Senate should do its job. And in the end, the Senate uh, did. Now, I think we should note that before we got to this moment, uh, President Trump has made a series of appointments to the Fed that are widely applauded, including mm -hmm. Jay Powell. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, uh, most people involved in uh, business and uh, economics think that uh, people like Powell and Clarida have done a very good job. Uh, this is a moment where the president uh, keeps trying to play to his base. And uh, as uh, Stephanie just suggested, he may not mind. It, it may not be any uh, 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 skin off his knee if Stephen Moore gets embarrassed and he can go to his base and say, Look what all these uh, politically correct people drummed up about him and try to uh, fire up his base even more. Hey, but the point there, though, is that Powell was lauded as a good choice, uh, Kelly, but increasingly the president's been in a spitting match with Powell because Powell's not doing the president's bidding, which, by the way, a chair of the Federal Reserve is not supposed to do. And it's what Stephen Moore was willing to do. Right. He so this is, the, this is the problem. The good pick notwithstanding, the good pick is not doing what the president wants. And by the way, Kelly, because you've been through so many elections, you remember that during the election cycle and prior to being president, Donald Trump felt that the Fed was keeping rates artificially too low and should be raising them. So the president is new to this idea of keeping rates uh, low. Punishing Savers. Yeah, punishing savers, that's right. And the president is, we have seen, trying to put people in place in agencies and departments across government that do line up with where he's thinking, not necessarily historically, but what works for him now. And so that is one of the issues. And, the, and we'll be watching closely who is in the pipeline for these vacancies after Kane and Moore are out. We don't have any indication yet from the White House. And we don't know, and it'll be interesting to watch, if the president will float names again, as he did with these two men, or if if he will do the more formal process of complete a vet, do some background checking with uh, the kinds of names and, and Republican economist Mankiw and others that uh, John referenced to see who could get through and who would fill that space on the Federal Reserve. The other thing, although the president has control of this, typically presidents don't uh, have this kind of a political thrashing about with the Fed on a daily basis and have a bit more space between the White House and those who handle monetary policy. But 
of course, that's, uh, that's old thinking in the Trump era. John, quickly before we go, how damaging could Stephen Bohr Moore have been? He was someone who repeatedly criticized, said uh, economic statistics were phony, uh, and then when it was politically convenient, pushed that we should go back to using the gold standard, which is widely panned by most relevant ec economists. The larger issue here, Stephanie, which I think you're alluding to, is the credibility of the Federal Reserve. That is an immensely valuable thing to the United States, the United States economy. And if you uh, uh, foster the impression by putting people on the Fed who don't belong there, or in the view of uh, uh, even people in, in the, the president's own party don't belong there, uh, then you have the risk of people uh, beginning not to uh, look with um, uh, authority uh, on the decisions of the Federal Reserve. Jay Powell was somebody who does inspire that confidence. So did Janet Yellen. Uh, so did Ben Bernanke uh, before them. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you start putting people on who, as, as you guys indicated at the top, says, well, I'm on to push the president's economic mm -hmm. agenda, and the president's economic agenda is to get the president reelected, uh, that is not uh, what inspires confidence in our allies and our trading partners and the rest of the world. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.